Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern, and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Oh, so here we are, part two of building Jarrow Road Station. But before we make a start, I'd just like to say that I'm overwhelmed by the amount of comments uh, that I had received from the last video, and uh, yeah. And we are very much appreciate all the comments. And uh, yeah, it's good to be back on the scene again. So, here we are, part two. We've got a lot to get through. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's beginning to look like a builder's yard at the moment, full of doors and windows. And uh, talking about doors, I've reworked these two doors um, because the diagonal braces were the wrong way around. So thanks for those of you who spotted it and um, I have quickly quickly reworked them so that was uh, an easy fix. So let's crack on. Before we continue with the rest of the windows I had a comment about the doorknobs that I'm going to put into these doors or onto these doors and basically all it is I'm using these fine scale track pins they're quite thin uh, you need to drill a 0.5 mil hole into the door and then cut the head of this tiny pin off roughly about 3 mil from the underside of the head and then you super glue that head into the door therefore create an illusion of the knob on the door and then you just dab it with a little bit of brass paint so I thought I'd mention that but I'm not going to do that just yet until I'm ready to fit the doors because I don't want anything on this back face um, while I'm marking out on the card which you'll see as we go along but I thought I'd show you that early because uh, a couple of you have asked about it and uh, they are from Pico so yeah, I thought I'd mention that right so moving on to the windows the next windows I want to tackle nice and simple is these large round windows now I mentioned it before I think when I was drawing up the plans I'm using these IP 66 rated um, seals which you'll find on 20 mil glands which you can get from your local uh, electrical retailer um, you can buy these separately so all I'm going to do with these is I'm going to cut off those tiny top tabs and then put in a cross member in the center and then that's the window done and you should end up with something like this um, if you look closely I have notched into the inside of this washer so that when the long piece is glued in it fits in there snugly and it stops it from moving and I've done the same with the little pieces as well just notched it into this into the washer and then make sure that that's a nice snug fit as you can see there you can just see the notches and uh, that's it, that's the round window now I might actually set this back a little bit from the brickwork when I come to fit it rather than trying to cut that framework as it were even further down but we shall see we shall see how it looks on the night <laughs> well that was nice and easy to make a round window um, the overall dimensions of these round windows is roughly around about 22 millimeters just thought I'd uh, mention that inside is 16 so yeah it's a, it's a good size window so that's them done 
Now we concentrate on, on this window, the big window here that we have front and back of the station. Um, the idea here is I'm going to make a frame and then use quarter round, half round, half round and then quarter round again to fit inside the frame to make this window. So now we're moving on to the big windows and um, I'm going to make them the same width as these double doors. So these double doors have worked out roughly 38 millimeters. I've got to trim a little bit off the edge there but um, yeah it works out at 38 millimeters. So if we look at the photograph The width of the door is roughly the same as the width of the windows, as you can see. But this photograph shows it better. So if you follow that line, it's roughly bang on centre to centre from the edge of the brickwork. So that's what I'm going to do here. Basically, I'm going to make a frame up using some 1mm by 5mm plastic strip, like so, just gluing the edges together. Then I'm going to insert it with half round and quarter round 2mm strip. Right, and um, this is what I was hoping to achieve, and I think I've done a pretty good job of it. So we started off with our frame and we've used 2mm half round for the two middle pieces and 2mm quarter round for the two edge strips and then what we've done then we've got some 4mm by 0.25 and stuck that on the back of the 2mm half round um, which gives it a lip on the inside for the window frame. So this is stone, the half round would be stone and uh, the quarter round stone and uh, by putting the 4 by 0.25 on the back of the half round creates the window frame and I've used 2mm by 0.25 across the bottom and the top and 1mm by 0.25 strip across the middle and on the ends here here and here I've used 2mm by 0.5 to create the lip just in there as you can see so we have one of our frames and the good thing about this if you notice there's a slight curve in the way that it looks uh, it's sort of come about by accident by putting the 2mm half round flush at the front and the quarter 2mm round flush with the front there but somehow it's created this semi half round on the inner side so, to me, that's a bruisey bonus. Right, I shall carry on, crack on, and do the other one. I'm halfway through this window here, so I just thought I'd show you where we're at. Um, as you can see, I've got the two half rounds in and the quarter rounds, and I'm just laying in the 4mm by 0.25. Um, so I'm doing them first before we put the cross members in. Just making sure that they sit equally. And when we flip it over, we've just got the millimeter overhang either side. Like so. And then we put the strips in that go across. 
the 2 mil by 0.25 across the bottom and top and then the 1 mil by 0.25 across the mill and that concludes building the frame I'm now painting the inner frame white that's that little ledge you can just see there off the half round and the frame along the base of the window there so basically I'm doing the internal frames white and then I'm going to go over the rest of the frame with a satin lay grey to give it a, a marble effect rather than a sandstone. Originally I was going to do it all in sandstone but uh, I think the marble grey will look great against the brick but uh, we'll soon see uh, the more into the station we get into. So we're just doing uh, the white frame for now. Right, so these windows that are running along the platform, I'm going to paint in this a very light grey. They're quite rustic looking, and um, and it does show when you come to paint them because it looks like stone, um, as you can see. They look like stone windows, and uh, yeah. It's a humbrel paint and the number is 196. So I've got 10 of these to paint. So just both sides of this window will have to be painted because you'll probably end up seeing them from inside uh, the station as well. Just got to make sure we don't put too much on because. Um, we don't want to increase the thickness of the frames already by putting too much paint on. So there you go. We'll paint the backs of these windows later once the, the fronts have dried. There you go, one down, and seven to go. And now we're adding that satin grey to the main large windows. Uh, as you can see that with this one that's already been done, there's a very, very subtle change in colour. Yeah, so to paint these half round um, plastic strips, I'm having to attack it with the paint from 
both sides. So I'm doing this side. And what I'll do then is I'll flip it over and attack it from on that side. So I'm going right in that corner and along that line. So that uh, I'm not touching the white paint. If he goes flat on, there's a good chance you could um, touch the actual white window frames. I've had this kit hanging around up here for a long time, and um, as we're waiting for the paint to dry, we might as well get cracking with this. It should only take a couple hours to do. Um, such a small water tower and it's ideal for Jarrah Road because as you know there's not a lot of space at Jarrah Road so what have we got here well we got roofman panels some side panels and some water spouts a couple of pairs of and four sides and oh, there's the door for the for the kit but um, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna add this window to the kit as you can see um, I've already pre-marked it for this window and um, yeah so Let's get cracking. As you can see, I've made a little bit of a start on this water tower. Um, painted the two doors, so put them to one side. And I've put on the first coat of paint for the actual tank. Um, it probably will need a second coat. So we'll put them to one side. So the next thing I want to do is concentrate on the window. I've already cut a hole into the wall um, but the problem I'm having is the actual stone frame is rocking um, so what I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to scrape away the stones just a little bit just about two or three millimeters away from the edge just to try and get them flat a little bit so that the frame can sit on there without it rocking and hopefully we'll get a nice clean edge down there as well down the sides inside there so I shall continue and uh, see where we go from there that's the window frame uh, glued in place and I've actually put the water tower to together um, it does come with a water crane as such but that just glues onto the front so I've been coming up with the idea of um, why not make an articulated one bolted to the wall so I've had a look around in my come handy box so if I stick or glue of that there I have another piece glued there with another piece and then glue this on the end then you've got an articulated water crate stuck onto the side of the water tower um, so that's the idea I've come up with I think it's uh, that way around actually yep so that'd be glued there, that'd be glued onto there, then this piece, and then this piece. And then the whole thing would then spin around and then should end up above the tender. That's my theory anyway. I don't think I've seen one like this. I know we have water cranes with a, with a, with a, with a frame uh, which is fixed to the ground but not I don't think I've ever seen one like this but um, so this one is going to be unique 
it's probably a world's first but uh, we shall see anyway while this is like in this state I can cut a piece of plastic card and glue it inside and leave a hole for an LED because I want to light it up um, I'm not going to be putting any detail inside but what I will do is I'll blacken it out I'll paint the inside black and uh, yeah, and that'll be that done. So this is my articulated water grain. As you can see, I've glued all my odds and ends together, which I found in my common handy box. And once this is fixed to the side of the wall here, like so, then this bit here would swing round to come onto the logo tender. And I've also added a little bracket here, which is made out of 4 mil angle. Um, what I've done is I've cut a millimetre and a half off that side, and I've just filed it down to meet the radius of the pipe here. And there, there we have it. So what I'll do is, it's only just glued together, so I'll have to paint this up. And then once it's painted up, I can then glue it onto the water tower. And that saves having a separate water crane um, on Jarrah Road. It just saves that little bit of space. So, just a neat idea, using odds and ends. It's come along quite nicely. Um, as you can see, I've, I've added the roof and the tank to the actual top of the tower, and I have fitted an LED inside and blackened the walls. So we're getting there. Um, here we have a location plate, which I'm going to stick onto the layout, which you'll see later on. And hopefully this will, once fitted, will hide any shadows from the LED coming from the base of the building. But uh, that um, remains to be seen. So what I'm doing with this base plate is I have cut out a square in this corner and these two grooves here are going to be for the doors so once the doors are glued to the inside of the building they'll just fit in that slot and hopefully there'll be uh, no clash so that's what I'm doing next just removing this slot from the base and once that's done I will score some lines onto the base and then paint it a brown colour so it looks like flooring um, on the inside once it's um, lit. So I shall continue with this. We'll just see you later. But meanwhile, back at Chara Road, I have laid some cobblestones. Now this is where the water tower is going to sit. It's going to sit on these cobblestones. Um, and here we have the base of the water tower. As you can see, I've cut away this side here and here for the door, and I've taken this corner off so we can um, drill a hole for the cables. Now I want to set that about there, at least eight millimeters off this wall here. And then from this rail to there should be 25 millimeters. So when the water crane turns around, it should end up in the center of the tender. That's my theory anyway. So that's where that's going to go. So I just thought I'd show you um, the positioning of the water tower. Now, as you know, the space around here is really tight. And I've left the biggest space here 
for when I come to do the signal box. But uh, that's for another video. But in the meantime, I shall infill the ballast where I've cut away the ballast to fit the cobblestones. And I'll be weathering up these cobblestones similar to what I've done over there in the diesel depot. It'll give it that really dark, grimy look. I have now painted the tank on the water tower and the roof as well. And um, now I've decided to weather up the stones, as you can see there. Now what I'm using is a grey mix. It's a semi-matte 378 humble paint. And all I'm doing is, is I'm brushing it in to the grooves of the stone. Now it doesn't matter if it doesn't go into all the grooves because I'd like to see a little bit of cement. But it does help to change the colour of the stones. And then just wipe it off. Now by wiping it off it takes the paint right back and you're left with this unique colour and it looks quite realistic. So I'm quite happy with the way that that's turning out. And obviously around the base of the uh, water tower will be black. And uh, yeah, we shall see what this looks like when it's done. Now you've noticed I've got a little plastic hook there. I've made that out of a 4mm um, angle and then just paired it back to that about a millimetre. And you'll see what that will be for later on. It's got something to do with this valve that's on top of the tank here. You guessed it, yeah. I'm going to add a little bit of chain to it. So the guys can pull on the chain, which will open the valve, and the water will come out through the crane when it's glued on. So, I shall continue and finish off the tower to get it all looking like this the water tower on the layout in its final position and as you can see I've now added the chain which is just dangling there nicely and uh, the, the bracket there that it's supposed to rest on the paint is still a little bit wet because I've only just placed it down there so not a bad little filling job right Shall we have a look at the other end of the platform, where the station's going to be? Yeah, come on then. At the other end of the platform, it is truly beginning to look like a builder's yard. With all these windows done, and along with those windows painted, and the big mainframe windows, as you call them, they're done. So yeah, great progress this week. And I managed to fit in a little mini project. Along with adding this railing. So, next week we shall start putting some walls up. But until then, enjoy your model railways. Bye for now. Bye.